Feeding off this idea that you know, we should really just worry about the things that could ruin us, uh, how do you see the role of the risk manager? I'm a risk manager of a billion dollar organization or even you know, $500 million. What's my role? Right, well I think, you know, I think uh, not only risk managers but everyone you know, today is, is facing the problem of uh, we have a world that's more complicated than we can understand. And uh, you know, take engineers today. Um, if you're trying to design, say, a ma manufacturing line for something simple like, uh, you know, agricultural equipment or something, you know, John Deere or something, mm -hmm. um, you'd think you'd, you'd just give the engineers the, the problem, lay out the plant so it's efficient, go and they'll go off and solve the problem, they'll come back to you and you'll implement the, the solution. But, you know, problems are just too complicated to be solved by individual human brains anymore. Um, and in fact, it's been more than 20 years since John Deere started using uh, genetic algorithms, computational systems to design their manufacturing floors. Um, and they find solutions, ways of laying things out that are more efficient than anything the human brain can come up with. Um, it's also the case then that the plant, the plant is efficient for reasons no human brain understands. So is that good or bad? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. And the same thing is true of you know, aircraft design, uh, interpretation of uh, some x-rays for screening for breast cancer, for example. Some computational systems do much better than the human brain, and we don't know why, but they do it, and we can use those systems. So I think engineering has kind of made a shift from solving problems to devising systems that can solve problems for them. And that's just because the world is too, com too complex for the, the human brain to, to handle. So, so what is the role of the risk manager? I think, and I'm, I'm maybe, maybe uh, out on a wing on this, but I, I think the uh, real role of the risk manager is to remain a thinking human being and to, to pull themselves away from all these formulas and computational systems and data, all of which may be useful as a, as a component of um, informing yourself about potential risks that are out there, how big they are, what they may do, all the scenarios, etc. cetera. Um, but the risk manager remains most valuable if they remain, remain independent, able to think and learn and absorb information from a variety of different inputs. Mm -hmm. um, is not swayed by social pressures within an organization, say, uh, trying to do, wanting to do what the CEO wants to do because it has maximum profit um, opportunity. I'm sure that's a very difficult thing to resist that pressure, but that's where the risk manager can be really valuable, is in, in remaining a kind of intelligent force. Um, and I should also say that, you know, that, that intelligence may not always be articulable. You know, people can learn things and have intuitions that they could never say to you exactly why they think it's a really bad idea mm -hmm. to be doing this. They can tell you, you know, my experience has says this, Something's and this wrong. has really given me a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. And at least they can, if they can tell you that, that's valuable. And you, you know, I think, I think you know, it's being a human being, and, and there's nothing we have today that is quite as good as the human brain still for bringing together lots of different pieces of information and weighing them up in a rapid way to um, give a give a quick response. So the idea of the the role of the new risk manager is perhaps getting out of the weeds and becoming more of a reflective person, becoming more of a diverse intellect, you know, diving into areas of social neuroscience, physicists, um, nature, biomimicry, just really becoming a, um, what they call a, you know, a universal genius in a way. They know bits and bits of everything. So yes, I think the risk, risk manager you know, benefits from having wide exposure to you know, diverse communities, diverse sets of ideas. and. Uh, you know, and who knows where the, where the next important insight is going to come from. Um, I recently came across some you know, really interesting work by a guy named John Coates, who's a, well he was, he ran a trading desk on Wall Street for about 15 years, and then one day he decided, I think I'm going to go uh, get a PhD in neuroscience. And that's what he did, he went to Cambridge, got a PhD in neuroscience, and then he went back to the trading floor and did experiments. And um, so what he did, he, he had traders on the floor give uh, saliva samples, say every hour or half hour during the day. And he found some amazing things. Um, you know, we have an endocrine, endocrine system that um, releases you know, testosterone, cortisol, lots of different hormones that, that really affects how our brains work. And he found that levels of testosterone in, in the traders in the morning were strong predictors of their performance later in the day. So those with more testosterone did better than those with less. And it's not hard to explain why, because testosterone is a hormone that uh, leads people to, to be more risk-taking. It can improve your ability to concentrate. 
to, to involve multiple factors that work for a short period of time and make good decisions, to operate under stress, gives you more energy, better ability to focus. Um, so so that's, that's one interesting point. He went further and, and, and found that um, over long periods of time, um, these you know, testosterone levels would, would stay high in traders who were successful over and over again. So this testosterone hormone has a, has a beneficial effect for traders on the floor. There's a downside, however, because when testosterone is, is, is at high levels for long periods of time, saying during a very volatile period in the market, traders are, are you know, performing very well, they're making money, they get very confident. Testosterone buildup in, in any organism tends to lead ultimately to, to, to overconfidence, to kind of a great deal of anxiety and stress. Um, but more, more than anything, the, the idea that you know, kind of, I'm kind of invulnerable and it makes people take, take outsized risks um, in the belief that they've won so many times in the past, testosterone has, has built up in them and convinced them that they, right. they can't fail. Um, his research also found that uh, in down periods when traders did very bad and lost lots of money, uh, there's a different hormone, cortisol, that went up in their bloodstream. And we know that long periods of, of heightened cortisol levels lead to just the opposite kind of influence, which is that people withdraw, they, they see threats everywhere, they become very anxious, hyper-cautious. Um, and you know, so Coates, Coates has argued that he believes this kind of hormonal influence is probably, in, you know, some, to some degree, is influential in market, you know, booms, the boom and bust cycle that we see repeatedly in market economies. Um, and you know, as, as he put it, you know, peop the people who are managing trading desks should realize that they're managing a clinical population here. Right? So these people are not just normal people that are working just with their brains. They're brains that are on you know, drugs, in effect, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hormones, ordinary human hormones. They're biological beings, and you need to take this into account. So you know, risk managers would benefit from, from having that kind of knowledge, and that kind mm -hmm. of insight that goes way beyond any mathematical formula that goes in a different direction. And of course, history, being steeped in economic and financial history, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. you know, there's no substitute for that.